Okay, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to analyze and graph the rational function. I do have two other examples of this same type of problem with different scenarios. Um, because of the fact that rational functions have so many different things that can happen, I did do multiple um, videos on this just so that you can see some of the different situations. For this particular one, because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, that tells us that there's going to be a horizontal asymptote and not an oblique asymptote. Okay, so you can always look at this and figure out from the very beginning what kind of, um, whether you're going to have horizontal or oblique. If they're equal to each other or if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then you will always have a horizontal asymptote. Um, you have an oblique asymptote if the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. Okay, um, so for this one, we do want to state the domain. We want to see what values of x will work that I can plug in. We do want to find the vertical asymptotes or if there's any holes. Um, we already said that there is going to be a horizontal asymptote, but we need to find what that is. And then we're going to find the intercepts and we're going to graph. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do before I start analyzing this is I want to see if I can simplify this rational function. So the top part can't be simplified, it's just x plus 1. The denominator, what we're doing is we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 2, that add up to be positive 1, I mean, sorry, negative 1. So that gives me x minus 2 and x plus 1, because negative 2 times 1 gives me negative 2 at the end. And then the negative 2 here plus the 1 on the outside would add up to give me the negative 1 in the middle. And we can see that the x plus 1s do cancel out, so the simplified form of this is 1 over x minus 2. Working with the simplified form to help find the intercepts is a lot easier um, because that way you don't forget that you have restrictions. So the domain for this, remember the domain is always whatever makes the denominator 0. So in this case, and I'm just going to write it in set notation, is x cannot equal positive 2 or x cannot equal negative 1. Because if I solve both of these for 0, 2 minus 2 would give me 0, and negative 1 plus 1 would give me 0. So our domain is that x cannot equal 2, or x cannot equal negative 1. This one for part b, and I'm just going to go ahead and write it down here because I don't have a whole lot of room there. This one has both a vertical asymptote and it has a hole. And the way that I know is if the vertical asymptote is whatever makes the denominator 0 in the simplified form. So we know that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And then if anything cancels out, that tells us we have a hole. So we have a hole at x equals negative 1. Okay, so that's going to be important for our graph. If we want to, we could go ahead and put in our vertical asymptote of x equals 2. The hole I'm not going to put in yet because I have to figure out what's happening around there. Okay, so we do have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. For the oblique or horizontal asymptote, remember we already talked about the fact that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, and any time that happens, our horizontal asymptote is going to be the line at y equals 0. So this is when the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So anytime that happens, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So I would put this in here, and we can see that that's going to give us our horizontal asymptote. So now what we want to find is our x and our y intercepts. So I'm just going to go ahead and come up here. This is part D. We're going to talk about the intercepts. For x-intercepts, we're not going to have any. And the reason is, in simplified form, there are no variables in the, or in the numerator. And we also know that the denominator or that x cannot equal 0 because of the fact that um, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And I guess it could cross it at that point. Um, but because there are no variables here in the numerator, um, 
we do not have any x-intercepts. The y-intercept come when we take our simplified form and we plug in 0. So I would have 1 over negative 2. So that tells me that at f of 0, we have negative 1 half is where it crosses. So what we can do to help us out is we can just pick values like 1. If I plug 1 into my graph into this right here, I would have 1 minus 2 down here. So I would end up with negative 1 as a point. I could plug in more values, but I can I have enough to know that this is going to do this. And then it's going to continue this way. And because this is odd multiplicity, we know it has to open up over here. But I'm going to go ahead and just plug in the point 3, 1, 2, 3 into here. So if I do 1 over 3 minus 2 is really 1 over 1. So we can see that 3, 1 is a point. And I got that by just plugging it in to get a starting point. And then it's going to just get closer and closer on both sides. So our graph would look roughly like this. The most important things are being able to find the um, asymptotes and if there are any intercepts. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.